Learning SPSS can seem intimidating, I get it. But it's a highly needed skill in today's world. That's why we're breaking it down into easy to understand series, so you can learn to apply these powerful tools with confidence. Without further ado, let's dive in part 1. Getting started with SPSS. At the end of this training session, you will understand what SPSS can be used for, be familiar with the tools and features available in SPSS, be able to input and manipulate data into SPSS, and be able to carry out basic statistical tests on data in SPSS. What is SPSS? SPSS is software that allows you to edit and analyze data. Although it looks quite similar, SPSS is not just another version of Excel. SPSS is instead used for carrying out different types of statistical testing on datasets. It is usually used in subjects such as social sciences, and can be used on data from a range of sources, from customer surveys to scientific research. SPSS is able to open all file formats that are commonly used for structured data, so you can import your data from Excel, SQL databases and plain text. Now, let's talk about the interface. This is what the SPSS screen looks like. The toolbar. This is the toolbar, where you will find options such as the file menu, along with ways to carry out statistical tests, using the Analyze and Graphs menus. The ribbon. This is the ribbon, where you will find quick access buttons for basic functions such as Save, Print, and Open File, along with more specific functions such as Show Values and Run Descriptive Statistics. The rows. These are the rows of the data sheet. Each row corresponds to an individual case, for example, an individual participant. The spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet where data can be entered. The yellow square indicates the currently selected cell. The data, variable view. This option allows you to switch between data and variable views. The view currently on screen is data view. All right, everyone. Time for a quick reset. Take a deep breath and stretch. Hope you're enjoying the training so far. Next up, data and variable views. Data and variable views. When using SPSS, you will notice there are two different views that can be used, data view and variable view. In data view, you can input the data for your spreadsheet into the cells. Each column represents a variable, for example, name, gender, etc. Each row represents an individual case, for example, one person. In variable view, you can add and edit the variables in your database. Each row represents one variable. Each column represents a property of the variable, for example, nominal, ordinal, and scale data. Inputting data. To input data to SPSS, ensure you are in data view, then click one of the cells and type in the data you wish to add. This is shown in the image to the right. This can be in text or numerical format, but SPSS works better with all data in numerical format. Importing data from Excel. You can import data from an Excel spreadsheet into SPSS if you wish to carry out statistical analysis. To do this, 1. Ensure that the data in the Excel spreadsheet is formatted correctly for SPSS. For example, each column represents a variable, and each row represents one case. 2. Open SPSS. 3. Click Import Data. 4. Choose Excel.xls, XLSX. XLSM, from the file type list. 5. Open your selected Excel spreadsheet. 6. Select if each column has column headers. This will name the variables. 7. Click OK. The following video demonstrates this process.
to import data from Microsoft Excel into SPSS further analysis, first you need to make sure that your Excel spreadsheet is formatted correctly. This means that each column needs to be representative of one variable. And each round needs to represent one individual case, whether that's an individual person or an individual running of an experiment. However, your data are settled. As I can see here, my Excel data is formatted correctly for SPSS, so we're ready to import. To import data into SPSS, first we need to go to File, and then Import Data. We can then choose what type of data we want to import. For me, I'm going to choose Excel. Then, I can search through my documents to find the file to upload. Once I've selected the file, click Open. I can choose the worksheet and the range of data if I want to, or I can just choose to import the entire sheet. Here if I have column headers on my Excel spreadsheet, I can choose to read these as variable names from my top row. I'm going to leave this ticked so that it names my variables after what is in the top row from Excel. Then click OK. This has now imported my data into a separate data set within SPSS so I can carry on analyzing the data. Managing variables To add or edit variables in SPSS, first ensure you are in variable view. You will then be able to change the following variable properties. 1. Name, type a name for your variable, you cannot use spaces. 2. Type, click on the cell, then choose the type of data from the list. 3. Width, set the number of characters which can be displayed in the datasheet. 4. Decimals, select the number of decimal places for numeric data. 5. Label, here you can type in a longer description of the variable. 6. Values, you can give a text label for value codes here. 7. Missing. Click to define the missing type of value code. 8. Columns. Edit the width of the column in the datasheet. 9. Align. Set the alignment for the text numbers in the cell. 10. Measure. This is where you select between ordinal, nominal and scale data. Now, let's examine the types of variables, which include, numeric, comma, dot, scientific notation, date, dollar, custom currency, string, and restricted numeric. Variables that have values that are numbers, for example, height and weight, or other categories of variable that have been coded numerically, for example, 1 equals male, 2 equals female. Comma. These are numeric variables that include commas and full stops for decimals within numbers. SPSS will recognize these values as numeric despite the inclusion of commas. For example, this will write 50,400 and a quarter as 50,400.25. Dot. Similar to comma variable types, however with full stops, being used to delimit the numeric value every three places, and commas, being used for decimal points. For example, this will write 50,400 and a quarter as 50.400.25. These are numeric variables which are displayed to the power of 10 using E or D to precede the power. For example 5 to the power of 2 would be written as 5E2 or 5D2. Date. These are numeric variables displayed in any standard time or date formats. For example, date equals the 30th of September 16 or the 30th of September 2016. Time equals 1720. Dollar. 
These are numeric variables that contain a dollar, dollar, sign. These will be used for monetary data in dollar currency. For example, $25,000.50 would be written as $25,000.50. Custom currency You may define the custom currency, for example, British pound, yen, euro, in the variable type window. This allows custom currency characters to be displayed in the data editor, though they cannot be used during data entry. String String data refers to any type of data that is not numeric. This can include names, countries and other data that uses letters rather than numbers. SPSS cannot carry out analysis on string data, so it is often useful to use a numeric code for certain string data you wish to analyze, for example, male equals 1, female equals 2. Restricted numeric these are numeric variables that are restricted to non-negative integers. These values are displayed with leading zeros padded to the maximum size, width of the variable. For example, 5499 with a variable width of 8 would be written as 00005499. Measures of data The three types of measurement used in SPSS are Nominal Ordinal and scale. Nominal data is data that can be sorted into a distinct category. An example of nominal data would be favorite color or place of birth. Ordinal data is data that can be sorted into a basic order but cannot be measured. For example, ordinal data would be asking a person to rate their happiness on a scale of 1 to 10. You would be able to order the scores but not put a quantity on each individual. Scale data is any form of data that can be numerically measured. Examples of scale data are height, weight and amount of money. Test yourself. Check your understanding of variable properties in SPSS. Match the following description to each of the right properties. Drop your answer in the comment box. Fantastic work completing part 1 of our SPSS training series. You've successfully navigated the SPSS interface, mastered data input, learned about managing variables and understanding variable types, and grasp the measures of data. You've built a solid foundation. What's next? Basic analysis. In part two, we'll unlock the secrets of qualitative and quantitative data analysis, explore stem and leaf plots, and delve into the power of descriptives. These skills will empower you to perform meaningful analysis of your databases. To make sure you don't miss it, hit that subscribe button. Share this video with anyone who wants to learn SPSS. Also, please like, comment and rate your test knowledge.